Amen and amen. You're welcome to be seated. Welcome to be seated. I'm just going to change the sermon just a little bit. And uh, as I just feel led, God speaks to me about Exodus chapter number 12. I will start in, in Acts chapter number 10. I want to speak to you this morning just very briefly on liberation. Liberation, how to live freely. But I, I feel that something shifted while we were worshiping. And I, I want to go just with that. A very warm welcome this morning. We have some guests with us, Bishop Peter Matsumela and his wife and their elders and also Pastor Thomas Maseko. Won't you guys stand for us, please? We just want to welcome you. Can I again say Bishop Peter and his wife and his six elders? Won't you, won't you just give them an empower, honoring? God bless you. Thank you for being with us. Welcome to be seated. Won't you open your Bibles with me at, at Acts chapter number I'll tell you now, Acts chapter number 10. And I want to speak to you, Acts chapter number 10, number 3 and 4. And then I'm going to go to Exodus chapter number 12. Because I, I feel that there's a season that has shifted upon the body of Christ. <laughs> Something has moved. And today we're going to, I, I want to claim with you that what I believe is ours. You, do you know you serve the God that can suddenly show up and suddenly show off and move and shift anything and everything that's in your life. You may walk one way for one moment and then suddenly God can change you and you can walk another way. So in Acts chapter number 10, I want to start there and then I'm going to go to Exodus chapter number 12. And I'm just going to preach it how I feel it, okay? Is that okay? So in Acts chapter number 10, the Bible says, verse number 3, it says, He saw clearly in a vision about the ninth hour of the day as an angel of God coming into him or coming to him and saying to him Cornelius and looking attentively and becoming terrified he said what is it Lord and he said your prayers and your arms have ascended for a memorial before God the angel of God said your listen carefully your prayers and your arms came up as a memorial before God and I believe this morning won't you go for me to Exodus chapter number 12? I'm going to give you the verse just now. It's in verse 34, I believe. In verse number 36, I think. I'm going to get it now. Yeah, verse number 35. Exodus chapter number 12, verse number 35. I'm going to read for you and then I want to explain to you what I believe is happening this morning. Now the children of Israel, verse 35... Exodus chapter number 12, verse 35, thank you. It says the following, Now the children of Israel had done according to the word of Moses, and had asked for the Egypt, Egyptian articles of silver, articles of gold, and clothing. And the Lord had given the people favor in the sight of the Egyptians, so that they granted them what they requested. Thus the, they plundered the Egyptians. I want you to understand something here. And that's what I feel the Lord is saying to me. I want you to understand these people went as slaves to bed one day. They rose up as princes the other day. They didn't know that within a night they will go to bed with nothing. They will stand up with everything. They didn't know in a 24 hour, there will be such a shift in 24 hours that God would have changed everything for them. You see, Listen to me, church. It is not what is around you who you are. It's what you allow inside of you is who you are. It's, it's not the circumstances. It's the stances I take. Let me say it like this. Moses was a prince on the outside, but he was a slave on the inside. To go and free people that were princes on the outside, but they were slaves or princes on the inside, but slaves on the outside. That's why God sent Moses to them as a deliverer. But I want you to understand, God can make you prosper even in a wilderness. God took His people, listen, God took His people into the wilderness with, with all the silver and the gold on their backs. He took them with so much of His supply. There was a heavenly supply upon their lives. But the supply was for the sake of the wilderness. The supply was never for the promised land. Because in the promised land, there was supply. 
Are you with me? So all the gold and the silver and the stuff they took from the Egyptians. I want you to see something. If God is with you, you can become so anointed and you can, can become so close to Him that you can ask your enemy to give to you and your enemy must release to you because if God is with you, He can change it in the night. The Bible says that Moses said to his people, go and ask the Egyptians for their gold, their silver, and all their possessions. And they took that what was the Egyptians right in front of them. And they walked out with the booty of the Egyptians in their very eyes. But here's the thing. As they walked into the wilderness, the, the amount of finances and gifts and things that they took was not for the purpose of the promised land. It was for the purpose of the wilderness because God wants you to know you are not your surroundings, you are what you worship. Oh, let me say it again. You are not your surroundings, you are what you worship because the excessive amount that He gave was not for the purpose for them to worship it. It was for the purpose to worship Him because God can bless you even in the midst of your enemies. That's what he says in Psalm 23, verses 5. In the midst of your enemies, I'll make a table for you. I'll make your enemies watch you as I bless you. You see, there's people here sitting here this morning, Acts chapter number 10, verse number 3 to 4. The Bible says that your prayer and your arms has become a memorial before God. What does it mean? It means that in the heavens, there is a memorial building. There is a, a memorial, there's a statue that is blocking the view of God. That's exactly what the scripture means. It means that this was an ungodly man. Cornelius was an ungodly man. He wasn't even saved. But it, with his arms and his prayers. But I want you to see, it is not the prayer life of Cornelius that got God's attention. It was the arms. It was his giving lifestyle. It was the giving lifestyle of Cornelius that built a memorial for Cornelius in the heavens, in front of God. To such an extent that God said, I need to answer this uncircumcised person. I need to answer this Gentile. Listen, you can live a life of generosity to such an extent that it's not how you pray, but it is from the place that you pray. We don't pray from earth to heaven. We pray from heaven to earth. Because if you want to pray from earth to heaven, you don't understand you are seated with Christ in heavenly places. If I'm seated, I pray from heaven to earth, not from earth to heaven. You see, the, 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 the Israelites made this mistake. They let the wilderness around them to find who they are within them. And so the wilderness that was on the outside of them started to change the atmosphere that was within them. And because the wilderness on the outside started to change the, wilderness, the atmosphere that was within them, they started to worship the wrong thing. And because they, they started to worship the wrong thing, God allowed the wilderness experience to be extended. In actual fact, they were thinking they were worshiping God while God was waiting for them to die. You can be marching on the word of the Lord but if the atmosphere inside of you is inconsistent with the atmosphere of heaven, you will attract the wrong wildernesses to you. May I say, any type of wilderness is only there for you to exit out of that with power. There is not one wilderness that God will lead you into. I hear pastors preach all the time about wildernesses. Enough of this wildernesses. A wilderness is meant for power. Jesus went into it and he went out of it. I have never seen any wilderness experience being extended my whole life except if there's a spirit of stubbornness. You see, you can shorten your time or you can lengthen your time. And what I want to encourage you this morning with what I feel the Lord is saying, you can go to bed one way and you can wake up another way. But it's all depending on what you worship. Because whoever you worship, you become like. Oh, we are made in the image and in the likeness of God. And the Bible says that whatever we worship, we become. In actual fact, in the book of Romans, let me just show you this. In the book of Romans, the Bible says this, and we're seeing it. We are seeing it right in front of our eyes currently. In the book of Romans, chapter number 1, verse number 20, 
The Bible said, quickly put that up for me, Romans chapter 1, I can't get there quickly enough. Romans chapter 1, verse number 20. For since the creation of the world, His invisible attributes are clearly seen, being understood by the things that are made, even His eternal power and Godhead, so that they are without excuse. Because although they knew God, they did not glorify Him as God, nor were thankful. I please want you to see that. A lack of thankfulness is the place that God starts to give you over. Because unthankful means you don't understand who is the provider. But became futile in their thoughts. And their foolish hearts were darkened. Go on. Because, no, one back. Because of the new gods, oh sorry, you guys are right. Second 22. 22. Professing to be wise, they became fools. I want you to see this now. And changed the glory of God for the incorrupt, the glory of the incorruptible God into an image made like corruptible man and birds and four footed things and animals and creeping things. I want you to see there's a reverse order here. The, there's four dimensions of worship here. Four dimensions, and it's in reverse. The first thing that man worshipped after they fell, they started to worship creeping things. That's where we saw the whole Egyptian age coming upon us, the guys worshipping beetles and whatever, the creeping things. Then we saw the Roman Empire coming. They started to worship animals like the bear, like the eagle, etc. We know, we know the Greeks did the same. We also know that then after that worship came the worship of birds. But I want you to see what is the last form of worship. The last form of worship is man. The last form of worship before God will, will roll up this earth is man will start to worship man. Quickly go to 2 Timothy chapter number 3, please. 2 Timothy chapter number 3, verse number 1. I want to show you this because I believe that today there's going to be a shift. But know this, in the last days, perilous times will come. Verse number 2. For men will be lovers of themselves. The word lovers there is the Greek word phileitos. The word phileo means to love myself. The word phile phileo is a, is a compound word. Phileitos is a compound word. The word phileo and the word atos. The word atos means autobiography. In the last days, people will love their own story. They'll be lovers of money. I want you to understand something about money. God has got no problem with money. Unless money is in your hands and not in your heart. Oh, let me say that again. God has got no problem, no problem with it unless it's in your hands and not in your heart. Because when it's in your heart, it will affect your worship. And when it affects your worship, He will put you into a wilderness to change your heart to get you to God. Because God is not interested in temporary comfort. He is interested in internal destinations. So he will upset temporary comfort to get you to eternity. Oh, come on. Let me, let me use an, another example. There's many husbands and wives that they've once entered into a covenant, but now they are just cohabiting with one another. That means they are just living together, but there's no covenant anymore. There's many of us that have entered into a covenant with God, but now we are just cohabiting with God. Come on, we apply the things of God when it applies or when we feel it's comfortable. Come on, that's cohabitation. That's not covenant. Because covenant is not based on, on, covenant is based not on what I can get. Covenant is based on what I have put my will to and I stand by it. Oh, come on. Just like a marriage, you can't one day wake up and decide, I'm tired of this marriage, I'm going to walk out. No, just like that, you have to understand. God says in the Word that if you are a giver by nature, you build for yourself a memorial before God that He will answer. In actual fact, this word memorial means it blocks the sight of God in heaven. In other words, wherever there's two things, I want you to know, there's two things that can build a memorial in heaven. There's two things that you can do that can make God lose His own sight in the heavens. The first one is giving. 
The Bible says if you give, like in Acts chapter number 10, verses 3 to 4, it builds a memorial. That memorial becomes so strong that God himself says, I can't ignore this anymore. I must go and answer so I can get my eyesight back. The second thing that can build a memorial for you is prayer. Because Paul says to Timothy, Timothy, I've built a memorial for you in the heavens. Why? Because Timothy was going through a hard time. And Paul was saying, you can go through your hard time, but I'm going to remind God about you. And wherever the Lord looked in the heavens, he saw Timothy. Do you know, Timothy was a fearful man. The Bible said, that's why Paul wrote to him, you have not received the spirit of fear, but one of love, power, and a sound mind. Why love, power, and a sound mind? Because love gives you identity. Identity gives you destiny. As soon as you know identity, you have power. Listen, this is what Satan does. Satan's, Satan wants to give us a thought. And then he, he tells you that it is your thought. Let me use poverty as an example. Satan comes, he gives you a thought of poverty. Now he tells you that's your thought. And what happens is as soon as we believe it is our thought, we go to war with ourselves. He does it with rejection. He rejects us. And now he says to you, that is your thought. Or, or let me use an example. Let, let you guys can understand what I mean. Let's say I walk and now I, I see a, a lady for an example. And I lust after a woman. The Bible says if you lust after a woman in your heart, you've already committed adultery. Now, in that case, in that scenario, I want you to understand something. There's a massive difference bet between temptation and lust. Temptation is something that you'll be tempted by that you, would, that you like. Satan will never tempt you with stuff that you don't like, by the way. Like you can put vegetables right here in front of me. I won't be tempted. Why? I don't like it. Okay? So Jesus was tempted in, any, in every way yet without sin. Now let's go back to the scenario. Now let's say you see a beautiful lady, you lost after her. It's not, if you just see and recognize this is pretty, it's not yet sin. But when you cross the boundary and say, I want this for myself, now it's become sin. Now listen, this is what Satan does. He gives you a thought, a, a lustful thought. Then he says to you, but I, but Jesus now, Jesus says that if you lust after a woman, you've committed adultery, so you might just as well go and do it. So he makes the thought your thought. And as soon as you believe it is your own thought, he can walk away from you because he knows he has just dismantled you by the power of your own mind. And he doesn't need to bother himself about you because you will go to war with yourself. The same with money. Whatever you, listen to me, whatever you reserve or whatever you preserve cannot be reserved. Let me say it again. Whatever you preserve cannot be reserved. Because if God gave you Jesus Christ, which is the darling of heaven, the best there is, Romans 8.32, everything else that we can ever ask of Him is less than that. Correct? But you have to understand, by preserving things for ourselves we are showing what we worship because if we worship the kingdom we will worship things that cannot perish because the bible says put your treasure where what cannot where no moth can come in and no thief can steal are you with me but what I want to get to you this morning is if you study Philippians chapter number one as well, you'll see we, you should bank in a heavenly bank account. There is too many people that are banking in the wrong system. And because we are banking in the wrong system, we are remaining in wildernesses. And God does not want a wilderness to be extended unless you can get out of there by power. Oh, come on, come on in power. So God wants you to go to bed one way and He wants you to be delivered the other way, but He wants the kingdom to come into your realm. And for the kingdom to come into your realm, you have to apply the kingdom's rules. Oh, yeah. 
You guys are tough this morning. What has happened in power? Listen, God wants heaven to descend to earth. In the book of Matthew, chapter number 5, verse number 9 to 10, Scripture says the following. It says, anything that brings you evil, the word evil there is the word ponderos, poverty and pain. Anything that brings you poverty and pain is not from God. Anything that brings you poverty and pain is not from God. God doesn't need evil to teach you nothing. He can use pure light. You see, the, the wall that we are in is this. We think we need to work. This is, the, this is the war. We think that because Adam fell, we need to work ourselves back into the kingdom. No, what you need to understand is this. Is that when Adam fell, he exchanged God. Because God gave the earth to man. Man gave the earth to the devil. That's why God needed to come as a man to take back the earth from the devil and give it back to man. So every time you, and this is how I know that the, we, are, we are doing this the wrong way, is every time you want to work harder to be closer to God, you forget that you cannot get closer to God by the efforts you do. You get closer by God by Him selecting you. Because the Israelites couldn't help themselves. They went to better slaves, but they were chosen by God. The difference between you and the world is you've been chosen. The difference between you and the world is that you've received favor. And this is the thing you can't fight favor. You have it or you don't have it. But you can't keep favor always in prison. Favor will come out. Favor will jump out. They put Joseph in prison, but the dream was stronger than Joseph. And eventually the prison doors flung open and Joseph came out. They put Samson, they took his eyes from him, but you can't fight the anointing. The anointing will crush the wall for you somewhere or somehow. You see, you can, throw the, you can throw Daniel in the lion's den for you and leave Daniel there. But a man full of prayer will do something of lions and that's rest. Why? The anointing has the ability, the favor of God in your life has the ability to rest when everybody else is fighting. If I look at my nation, I see everybody fighting. But I want to say to you, the people of God need to be a people of rest because we have the power. Why could my master sleep in a storm? Because he was greater than the waves and the winds. Why could Daniel sleep in a lion's den? Because the God that he served was greater than the lions. Why could Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego not be touched by fire? Because they served the God of the all-consuming fire. How could David run into a field and kill the Goliath if he wasn't stronger than the Goliath? Come on, guys, we, we have to change our, our theology back to the place where our God is the same yesterday, today, and forevermore. That means if He did it for David, He can do it for me. If He did it for Samson, He can do it for me. If He did it for Joseph, He can do it for me. Oh, my God, He is not an inspector of people. If He did it for Jesus, He can do it for me. But here's the problem. God woke me up with this. Here's the problem. He is the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. He is a three-generational a three God. He gave Elijah the anointing. That the anointing went double to Elisha. The next guy that should have taken it was Gehazi. Because he was a servant to Elisha. He should have taken it. But the king comes to Elisha. And the Bible says that Elisha didn't want, he didn't want the money. He comes with about $9 million to him. He says, go, go baptize yourself in the Jordan River seven times. And he was angry, he said, no, there's better pools in my own nation. And then eventually the, the servant says, you know what, just go and do it. The worst that can happen is you can get wet. Just do what the man of God says. 
And he goes and he baptizes himself seven times and he gets out of that like a baby. Right? And he wants to bring money to the prophet. But the prophet says, oh, the prophet says, no, I don't want your money. Because there's a time to take and there's a time to worship. Oh, tell, say go deeper. Oh, no, no, no. Say go deeper, Pastor. Listen. The man then says, can I take the ground of your house, prophet? Can I take two bags of sand? The man of God says, yes, you can. Where did he place those two bags of sand? In the place of his worship. He went, go and read your Bible. He placed it in the temple where he worshiped because he said to, to the man of God, I will place this in front of all the other false gods. So when I kneel down and worship, I will place my hands and my face upon the Creator and I will worship secretly the right God. Oh. You have to understand that what you worship is that what defines you. And Gehazi should have taken uh, even a greater portion of the anointing, but he did not. And so the Bible says, oh, the Bible says that the man of God, Eli Gehazi comes back. The, the prophet says, where were you? He says, no, I won't know. He said, no, 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 my heart went with you. A heart went of you. Where were you? Where were you? No, I did nothing wrong. No, no, no. Where were you? And then he said this. He said, and the leprosy that was on Naaman will come upon you. Why? Because you exchanged God. You made money your God. And because you did that, I give you the curse of that. And the anointing of Elisha waited until John the Baptist came onto the planet. And only then it was released unto the Christ. But it should have been an Old Testament dimension because, oh, because Jesus, it was never Jesus' plan to curse Gehazi. He was the inheritor. I see a picture of the church. We have started to love the wrong stuff and worship the wrong things. And the God of heaven and earth is calling his sons and his daughters back and say, come back to me. Come and worship me. Because all that you have and all that you will ever have is God. It's not how much you give to Him, it's how much we keep for ourselves that's already His. What is man that we, that we like a brief, the Bible says. Oh, church, where are the sons and the daughters of God that fear His name? Where are the sons and the daughters of God that says no? We are different. We don't walk by sight, we walk by faith. We are the sons and daughters of God that fast and pray until heaven gets shaken and says, I can't ignore these people anymore. I tell you the truth as a prophet, I tell you the truth. We will not in this church preach messages what each year want to hear. We will tell people the truth to set them free so that they may serve the God of Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, Jesus. That's the only God worth serving. But we cannot be like Gehazi. Gehazi traded eternal worth for temporary comfort. He worshiped the wrong stuff. And God wants to tell you tonight, or to the morning, this morning. 
If you put your heart with Him, He'll bless you wherever you go. He'll make you increase wherever you go. You can go and sleep like a slave. He'll make you a king the next day. And let your enemies watch you as you walk out. If you put your heart upon the Lord, it says, lean not unto your own understanding, Proverbs 3. Trust in the Lord thy God of all thy ways. Acknowledge Him in all of your paths and He shall direct it. I don't know about you, but I'm tired. I'm exhausted of seeing Christians not standing and be powerful and anointed. I'm tired of seeing Christians talking but not showing. I want to see Jesus. I want to, I want to, I want a Jesus I can touch. Come on, what is it about our Jesus? He allowed a prostitute, Mary, 13, 14 years by scholarly date, to throw oil upon him, yet he was untouched by it. He sits with sinners, dirty scum. The, he chooses boys, 16, 17 years old, the fisher boys. Nobody would select it. He chooses Paul, a blasphemer, 28. What is it about our God that chooses the scandalous to do the impossible? I want to count myself in this morning and I, and I pray you would do the same. That we are the ones that He loves and because we are the ones He loves, we are the one He can bestow His blessing upon. We are the ones that He can bestow His anointing upon. Why? He can trust. You can trust love. Oh church, listen to me. You can trust love. Paul the Apostle found out that secret. He said, no height, no depth, no angel, no principality, no power, no wickedness. Nothing can, nothing can separate me from His great love. But I feel this morning that I want to exhort you and I want to encourage you. There is a memorial built for you. But you have to worship the right stuff. You have to worship Him. Because this is what happened. These Israelites, they were so blessed. They had more to, to they had too much. They had too much, actually. And this is what happens if you have too much and your heart doesn't change. You start to worship that what's around you. And as Moses was on the mountain, <laughs> busy getting instructions, the people were busy making another God for themselves. And Moses became so furious, he broke the tablets. He threw it to pieces on the ground. He smashed the law on the ground. You know why he did that? Because he wanted them to, he wanted to show them, as long as you are not worshiping the right thing, you can never access the right command to access God. And, I, and the Lord has not shifted. He has not changed. He is the same yesterday, today, and forevermore. And I promise you, if you seek the Lord the other thy God of all of thy heart, of all of thy mind, of all of thy soul, if you love your neighbor as yourself, if God becomes first, not second, first, my friend, you will have so much you don't know what to do with. He will bless you abundantly. He will send you people of relief. He will send you people that will come alongside you to help and assist. Why? Because you have still sought the Lord. And this morning I feel that there's a seasonal change over this church. And I've been feeling it for our nation. That there's a change that is coming. God will not allow Himself to be mocked. And the season that will change, you'll see those, there'll be a separation between the sons of darkness and the sons of light. And this will be the mark. The sons of light will be filled with preservation. They'll be blessed even though 
chaos is happening all around. And they'll become like a light for many will come. I tell you, we are not preparing for revival. We are already there. The harvest is already ready. It's been long ready. But we need to shift. See, Elisha says to his servant, the prophet says to his servant, where were you? Where were you? It sounds like the Garden of Eden. Adam, Adam, where are you? It sounds like Jesus, Father, Father, where are you? The truth is, the Father has never shifted. He's constant. Adam shifted. God came looking for his friend. Gehazi shifted God. The prophet had no other choice but to align himself with his God. Jesus came, died as a man to introduce you back to the right God. Now woe unto us if we serve the wrong one. What is this? What is this? And I'll end of this. What is this? That a man that has all the money in the world King David, he has all, he has the richest man on the planet during his time. And he says these words, there's nothing else that I want except your presence. What is that? What is that that silver and gold cannot buy? What is that Peter and James and John says to the, to the beggar, silver and gold we don't have. And that's, by the way, not the truth they did have. But they were saying, silver and gold is not what you need right now. What you need is Jesus. And when you have Jesus, He's going to sort all the rest out. You see, church, we need to come back to that place. Of say we have Jesus. Because if you have Jesus, you have everything. He will supply all your needs. He will meet all of your cares. Because if you have Him, you have everything. Heaven and earth responds at the name. But it's time. I can hear the Father. I've been hearing Him call for months now. Where are my kids? Where are they? It's been plaguing me by night and plaguing me by day. He asks me this often, where are they? I don't know, Lord, I'll try my best. I won't sleep at night. I'll pray. I'll do whatever I need. Where are they, son? I don't know, God. Why do they love this stuff so much? I don't know. Why have they traded me in? I don't know. One of the saddest scriptures in your Bible. And I fear we are going there. And I don't want to be there. I don't want to be there, but God is getting fed up. And you might have never heard me preach like this. Maybe it's good. Genesis 6, 6. And the Lord was sorry that he had made man on the earth. And he was grieved in his heart. God is calling his kids. Come back. Come back. Come back. 
And there's two things that he has test, that he's placed in you that he tests you with. The first one is what do you do with your money? What do you do? And this is not, I'm not preaching for anything. I'm preaching because I want you to understand. He placed another, he allowed another God on the planet to test loyalty. Money is here to test loyalty. Money is here to test hearts. It's never been about that. God placed it here to test. Because of, before, long before you had a note, the first way that people did commerce was they, they bartered of one another. I have something, you have something, I like yours, take mine. Here it is. And then coins came, then money came. So it's always been the original intent of money. has always been, you have something, I want it, now take this. Modern day man, we exchange gods like that. I was brought up this way. I was never taught from a young boy. I was never taught that I had 100%. I was always taught 80% is mine, 20% belongs to God. I've never lived with 80%, with an 80% mentality. It's always been like 100 for me. Because they, when I was young, they taught me. Now I'm older. Now I'm st I live like that. Everything I have is His. There isn't even a question. What should I do? Because all that I have is God's. So as you sit here this morning, can you hear the cry? He's calling saying where are they where are my sons where are my daughters and i for one i want to be one of those with you that say here we are we haven't turned our backs and we haven't walked away from you god we love you with all of our hearts yes do we get tired absolutely do we get weary? Absolutely. Do we get weak? Absolutely. But in my weakness, I'll find strength. When I'm low, I can only go high. When I run out of speed, I will rest in the Lord, my maker. Though he slay me, yet I will trust in the Lord. And I'm calling to you this morning with me to rise up and say, let's be different. Let's be full of royalty and power, dignity and might, anointing and overflow. But that our hearts are fixed upon the Lord. That our worship will be the Lord. Oh, come on, church. If we meditate on the Bible as much as we meditate on our phones, we will live lives of power. But I want to call to you, my friends, my sons and my daughters this morning. Imitate me now and follow me. And let's go to the God with all of our hearts, with all of our might. And I tell you, I tell you the truth. I tell you the truth you will see an acceleration of favor upon your life that you've never seen before. You'll walk in one way. You'll walk like you are today. You'll walk in your tomorrow and suddenly you'll find yourself with prosperity. With one message to the right person, God can bless you so much, you don't know what to do with stuff. I've seen people walk out one way, come back another way. I've seen people, I've sat next to a young man once. I sat next to him, next to him. We prayed a prayer. We said, God, we believe to be debt free. In one moment, God put that prayer upon somebody else's heart. Somebody else paid his house of 729,000 rand, 850 cents. I remember it to this day. He showed me, I, I literally fell off my seat. Let me tell you a true story. The other day, I lost, I lost my wallet. Somebody took it. They, I, well, I lost it. 
I, I, what happened was I, I placed my wallet in the, um, in the trolley. I was going to, I was exercising in the gym and I placed my trolley, my, my, and you know these, these lines that are through the trolleys that you can't, it's a full trolley thing. I don't know, they do it to push me in trolleys. So I put my wallet there and I was in, I was listening to music and you know when you listen to music, you're in another place. So, because you'd like, you know what I mean. Anyway, so I left and I did the shopping, you know, I, my wife gave me a list, you know, as an obedient husband, I did that. And, and, and when I got to the till, I was like, where's my wallet? And to be honest with you, I couldn't remember. And then I thought, I last used it at the gym, so I ran back there and said, did you guys see it? He said, sorry, sir, we don't know what you're talking about. Nobody saw it. The Lord said to me, he said, go back to the trolleys. I went and ran back to the trolleys. There was nothing. So I ran back to the gym. Again, nothing. And then the Lord said this to me. He said, go to the entrance place of this shop. So I walked there. And I, as I walk in, here in the entrance stands a lady with my wallet. She looks at me, she says, here's your wallet. And she walks away. I was like, how do you know that's mine? And the Lord said to me this, take care of mine, I'll take care of yours. Now that's, that sounds silly to you, but for me, I was already thinking, I need to phone this bank, I need to phone that person, I need, oh, driver's license, God's sake, that lion's, oh no, dear, dear Lord Jesus. That's how I was thinking already. I was already making those calls in my mind. But the Lord is faithful. It's a simple story, but it means a lot to me. Listen, I want to encourage you. This morning, we're going to pray together. And we're going to trust the Lord. We can trust the, the maker of heaven and earth. I don't want to see one of you in debt. I don't want to see one of you struggle. I want to see you blessed in the city, blessed in your coming and blessed in your going. I want to see you with overflow. I want you to come and sit here without worry, without woe, without anxiety, without fear, without doubt, without disbelief. I want you to be blessed, but for the right reasons. I want you to be blessed because you serve the Lord thy God. Your maker, my maker. Amen. And so this morning we're going to pray. And we're going to trust God that there will not be one person in this place that is, doesn't have a proper job. First thing we're going to pray for. Second thing, there's promotions that are hanging around. It needs to be taken. And we're going to pray for that. Let me tell you a quickly a story because I want you to understand this before I pray for it. I was prophesying over a man the other day, a couple of days ago. And I saw a mantle, he, the mantle of his of the, he, what he should have walked in. I saw the mantle floating over his head like that. And I was wondering, why is this mantle not on him? Because it's his. Why is this man not walking in the power of this mantle? And then as I was looking at him, I saw the Lord whisper into my ear. He said, even though he is the rightful heir, he, ha he is an orphan by his spirit. And so he cannot access with an orphan spirit that what belongs to sons. Now the Bible says you have not received an orphan spirit, but a spirit by which you may cry, Abba, Father. So I dealt with his orphan spirit first. And then I gave him the mantle. I said, take it, for goodness sake, take it and walk in it. Listen, many of us here, you are sons and daughters of God already. Stop acting like orphans. Orphans beg. Sons walk in. Oh. In my father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you plainly, but it is so. So as you see me go, I'll come back for you and I'll prepare a place for you. That's Jesus, by the way, John 14, 1. 
in my father's house are many mansions. The word mansions there is the word economies. There are many economies in my father's house, many ways that I will bless you, many ways that I will prosper you, many ways that I will advance you, many ways that I will extend you, many ways that I will empower you. There is many, 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 many ways, many ways. And if it were not so, I would have told you. But I'm telling you that I'll take care of you all the days of your life, and I'll come back for you, and I will take you where I am forever and ever and ever. Come on, church, jump to your feet. I've, pre I've preached enough. Jump to your feet. Today we ask Him. And when we ask, we ask boldly. We lie it. Are you with me? So, Heavenly Father, I thank you in this morning. I can pray for my people. Ex stretch your hands to the heavens. Lift your arms to the Lord. Father, I call Him that in this day, that there will be not be one person in this place of out occupation. There will not be one person in this place of our job. Not one. Not one. Father, I call heaven and earth as witness this morning. Heaven and earth as witness. That I declare over my people, they will be free from anything and everything that holds them back. They shall be a people of overflow. And in this day, Father, I release through the power of the Spirit jobs and more jobs, promotion and even more promotion. And they will find favor in the most unlikely places. Lord, that they will find favor in the eyes of their enemies even. And that their enemies will be sources of blessing unto them. But in this day, Father, I cast out and we cast off the spirit of orphans. We are not orphans. We are sons and daughters of God. And Father, I pray that my brothers and my sisters will walk in dignity and in power and royal authority from this day. May the holy anointing become more and more and more. And Father, we bind the devil. We cast out his works. And Father, I speak a word over every person that is here in this day. And you shall be called blessed. You shall be called beloved. And this is what I hear the Lord say unto you in this day. I have given you help. And I have chosen you among the people. I have found my servants with my holy oil and I have anointed them with whom my hand shall be established also my arm shall strengthen them the enemy shall not outwit them nor the sons of wickedness afflict them I will beat down their foes before their face and no plague will come near to them but my faithfulness and my mercy will be with them. And, and in my name, I will exalt them. I will rise them up in one day. And I will make their firstborn to prosper all the days. To the highest kings of the earth, I tell you the truth. My mercy I will keep with them forever. And my covenant shall stand firm with them forever. And to the seed that is inside of you, it will endure forever. And on his throne, the throne of Jesus, there will be no end. And Father, we thank you that in this day, we can claim this as sons and daughters. As your word says in Psalm 89, so shall it be in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Come on, let's give Jesus a praise offering. Come on, let's give Jesus a praise offering. Father, I pray now for every one of us that is here that things shift now. 
Faith is now. And I pray, Lord, that now things have shifted. I see, Father, these people, even as they walk out of this place, things shift. And Father, as they walk into their tomorrow, that today is already there. And that all things, all things will work according to the anointing that's on them and of in them. In Jesus' name. Pray this prayer with me. Say, Father, I thank you that I'm highly favored. And wherever I go, favor goes. I thank you for a double portion of your holy anointing. Father, help me that I will not worship the wrong God but that my heart and my affection will be upon you, God, all the days of my life. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Come on, let's give Jesus some glory again. Let's give Jesus some glory. Thank you so much for joining us for our live stream. We want to encourage you to be a part of all our other live streams that happen in the week. That's Sunday morning, Sunday evening, as well as our service on Tuesday evening. Be a part of the movement and the family that is empowered. You know, we always say, you online are as much a part of the family as the guys here on this campus. So follow us on Instagram, like our page on Facebook, and all you have to do is search for Empowered Church Maine and be a part of that movement. On YouTube, make sure to also search for Empower Church and click the subscribe button. Make sure you get notified the moment there's any special videos that get uploaded onto our YouTube page. We also want to hear about any testimonies that you might have. Tell us what the Lord has done for you. Share them with us because this is what we call home victories. Our answered prayer for you is a celebration for us. So send us an email at testimony at empowerchurch.co.za. If you've been impacted by this ministry in any way, we want to encourage you to partner with us financially and help us continue delivering God's Word all around the world. All you have to do is visit www.empowerchurch.co.za and find the giving option that works best for you. Thank you so much for joining us. Now go and live the empowered life. <laughs>